Bank of America hopes its mortgage problems are behind it after agreeing finally to a $16.5 billion settlement over its role in the 2008 mortgage meltdown. The U.S. Attorney General Eric Holder calls the settlement an historic resolution that goes far beyond the cost of doing business. As a part of this settlement, Bank of America has acknowledged that in the years leading up to the financial crisis that devastated our economy in 2008, it, Merrill Lynch, and Countrywide sold billions of dollars of RMBS backed by toxic loans whose quality and level of risk they knowingly misrepresented to investors and to the United States government. Bank of America says it expects the accord to reduce third quarter earnings by about $5.3 billion before taxes. That converts to about $0.43 cents per share after taxes. The former chairman and CEO of Wells Fargo Bank had a lot to say about the agreement between Bank of America and the Department of Justice. Dick Kovacevic says the government's motivation is all political. This is just simply uh, a political stance and theater uh, that uh, has been going on for five years of, of bashing financial institutions. Again, neither J.P. Morgan or its employees or Bank of America or its employees did anything wrong here. Uh, they just bought companies that did wrong. They have big pockets and, and therefore uh, they uh, get a lot of, uh, of, of uh, political value by having uh, press re releases and press conferences. It's a very controversial issue. Joining us now to talk more about all of this, Christopher Whalen, an investment banker and senior managing director of uh, research at Knowles Bond Ratings Agency. You know, um, Chris, some people would argue that the government hasn't been tough enough on the banks. Uh, what do you think of what Dick Kovacevic was saying and what do you think of the public criticism? Well, Dick Kovacevic is absolutely right. I mean, the, the settlements... Susie, are, are kind of welcome in a sense that we're finally hearing the attorney general talk about this, but he's five years late. Uh, instead of prosecuting the officers and directors of the banks that did the wrong and that sold bad securities, we're forcing investors to pay for the settlement. The investors are the victims. If you look at the city settlement, if you look at the Bank America settlement, a very large percentage of the funds that are being provided are going to go for modification of loans, donations to mm -hmm. worthy uh, consumer groups. But the real victims of the crisis were investors, pension funds, insurance companies, financial institutions. And unfortunately, the politics of this, is, as Dick said, are really about pandering to consumers. Uh, that's the false narrative we're, we're all facing here, unfortunately. You know, uh, the, uh, the government would say, I think, uh, by way of rejoinder, though they have not done so, they have not taken prosecutions against individuals, right. that nothing in this settlement precludes them from doing so. So they could go after individuals, I suppose. And, of course, no, yesterday... No, no. No, they can't, Tyler. I mean, what, what happened is Tim Geithner, Larry Summers, they all said, oh, we can't prosecute the bankers because of systemic risk. They said this very publicly. And, it, and they're wrong. You know, the way you heal the markets and you get investor confidence back is to show people that we have rules. Let me give you an example. Uh, we're talking for years now about getting private investors back in the mortgage market. Why would any rational investor put money at risk if the attorney general can show up and take money right. from you? Okay. Uh, th there's no reason to do it. All right. Let's uh, bring in Arthur Wilmarth to uh, join this conversation. He's a professor of law at George Washington University. I know, Arthur, that you've been listening in on this conversation. What do you say to what Chris has been saying? Also what uh, Dick Kovacevic said earlier today. Well, well, first of all, there, there are two groups of people uh, whose opinions you have to change. One is the senior executives. Senior yeah. executives have to be held responsible. If senior executives are not held responsible, why would their successors act differently? But the other group that you have to change is large institutional investors, including pension funds, including mutual funds. And so I think what the government has done in levying large civil penalties against these three banks was necessary but not sufficient. It brings to the shareholders' attention that there was pervasive and systemic wrongdoing at these banks. And what is most shocking, the wrongdoing continued even after the crisis broke out, so mm -hmm. the allegations include allegations, actually admitted facts, that, that they continued to sell shoddy and, and fraudulent mortgages to the Federal Housing Administration after the crisis broke out. Their, their basic uh, 
conduct did not change. Mm -hmm. And that's that's very shocking. Well, let me and turn think... the conversation back to Mr. Whalen. I mean, uh, get you to react to what uh, Arthur just said. Uh, but the, the very same shareholders whom you say are now paying and bearing the responsibility right. were shareholders who made a lot of money at Countrywide and at Merrill Lynch uh, over the years through the practices that are being uh, sanctioned today. And, and secondly, mm. some of those very same shareholders uh, in those banking companies uh, benefited from taxpayer bailouts, didn't they? Well, they did, but let's also remember that these large public companies bought these crippled financial institutions. You know, in the case of Countrywide, the firm would have failed if Bank of America hadn't bought it. Bear Stearns, Wamu uh, were bought by J.P. Morgan. But uh, Bank of America moved on, uh, moved to buy Countrywide before the crisis was oh, in full flower. Well, yeah, but they were the warehouse lender for uh, Countrywide. Tyler, Countrywide had nowhere else to go. Uh, mm -hmm. The firm definitely would have failed if it right. hadn't been acquired. All right, l l I would like to get Arthur back in. Um, to what extent? have these actions by the government you think changed behavior so if something like this were to happen again um, will the whether it's financial institutions or other institutions do you think that these uh, fines have been enough to deter bad behavior well the the three settlements have been quite recent so it's it's early to tell I mean I think one thing we, we need to look for is whether shareholders the large shareholders will seek themselves to hold the senior executives accountable. Uh, so far, I don't think you can be confident that we have changed behavior. No. I, agree, I agree with Chris that you need to hold senior executives accountable. The government has the tool to do that, which is civil money penalties under the same statute, and they need to do that. But I think that, that uh, I, Chris made an important observation, which is that these three banks mm -hmm. were warehouse lenders to all the subprime lenders. They then packaged all the securities and sold them, as we now know, under fraudulent and deceptive representations and warranties. Okay. So they were deeply embedded in this from the very beginning. Yep. Mm -hmm. Well, it's a, a conversation that's going to obviously continue for many years on. History will tell which is the right way to go on this. Gentlemen, thank you both. Christopher thank Whalen you. of Knowles, a bond rating agency. Arthur Wilmarth from George Washington University.